good morning. My name's Tom Johnson. I work for Campress Seed Company in Manteca. Um, we're a wholesale seed company. We work with Mid Valley. We work with most of the chem rep um, companies, as well as several of the uh, seed companies up and down the state. We mostly specialize in cover crops for different capacities, different things that go on. So I worked, I got, Kamar got a hold of me last fall and said, hey, we want to try this stuff because this orchard has some infiltration issues. It's pretty heavy soil. There's some boron issues as well in it. We wanted to see if we could either mitigate it or I don't think you're going to remove it, but maybe if we put some more organic, more organic matter in the soil, um, we can help with the uptake and maybe the trees will be a little bit happier about the whole thing. I, I, the jury's out on that. I don't know how well that'll work, but it's something we wanted to look at. So we took the parameters of what we were up against, heavy soil, infiltration issues, um, a not quite fully closed orchard. I believe it's about 10 years old or a little less. Um, so it hasn't closed canopy completely. Part of it's because of the tough conditions it's in. And we said, okay, well, these would be the candidates of annual cover crop that we would use at least to start out to get the grower one adjusted to using a cover crop and two, start in on making the infiltration a little bit better. So we're looking for things that had deep rooting and were tough enough to grow in heavy soil, dry, wet, everything in between type conditions. So that kind of narrows the field a little bit. <clears throat> so the grower himself, after we were done, planted a spring triticale, which is a cross of wheat and rye. So it's got a deep root system underneath of it. And a spring is not going to depend on having a cold treatment to make it head. So obviously it's headed out. It's definitely due to be chopped up and turned under. We put a mustard mix in, which is basically our brassica mix, which has two, two kinds of mustard, canola and radishes in it. The idea on that is, okay, it's an annual. It's got a, they're all strong tap-rooted plants. So hopefully that tap root's helping to open that soil up down below. When you mow the top off, that root rots away and leaves those channels in the soil. They may seal up a little bit, but it still made a mechanical indent in the soil. And then we got a winter triticale versus a spring triticale. A winter triticale prefers a cold treatment to make it bolt. So looking at, we'll go look at it here in a minute or so. It's shorter, it's a little leafier, and it's not near ready to, to head out and be chopped. You can mow it now, but it may grow back and you may mow it again and get another root flush underneath of it. When we started working with those triticales, we found that a lot of times that top growth was only five, six inches tall, but the roots were a foot and a half deep. And it's like, okay, well, it's got deep roots underneath of it, so we don't really care. In this situation, you don't care about a lot of biomass, you're not gonna turn it in. So it's like, shorter's better, maybe. You could mow that thing and it'd grow back in the fall, in the spring, as they're leafing out or in almonds if they're blooming. It's shorter, you can mow it for frost control or just access to drive through it and it'll grow back again, mow it again. You're gonna pump more root tissue into the ground because it'll die off when the top's cut off and then it'll grow back out again. So you're pushing more of that in there versus having to make a big eight foot tall thing that now you have to chop up and disc in. And the last one we put in was a mix we developed probably six, eight years ago for this type of thing. We wanted infiltration, but we wanted a legume or several legumes added to it. And we wanted the, the infiltration through the root action of the triticales and the small grains that have deep roots and also through the brassicas. So there's mustard, radish, and faba beans, peas, common vetch, all of which are kind of a standard annual legume used in biomass cover crops. So typically management would be, yeah, about now you'd mow it and you would disc it in to get that nitrogen boost into the soil. It doesn't have to be. That extra legume tissue in the upper growth is gonna help break down all that stuff as it lays on top of the ground if that's the way management issue you're gonna use. The grains in it are triticale and fall rye. Well, fall rye is one of the parents of triticale and it's like the winter rye or winter triticale in that it has to have a cold treatment to bolt. So it's kind of sitting there going, okay, I think I had enough cold, but I'm not quite ready to head out yet. So it could go longer into the, into the spring before it was like, okay, I need to terminate it. So the one I'm standing in front of here is a mustard blend. 
and it started flowering probably a month, month and a half ago. There's a, this is a dark, must, a dark seeded mustard. There's a light colored mustard or common yellow mustard. There's a canola and the white flowers are the radishes. Um, and that's how you kind of look at this. And we were walking around out here about a month ago looking at it and it's like, yeah, you can see some differences in what grew where and what competed with what. Um, it did a good job. It's, yeah, it's due to be cut up. Another use that we use this particular mix for, which is actually a product of, that we make for the project APSM, Seeds for Bees program, is we try to get it out there and have it flowering for almonds or other flowering crops to feed the bees. What they found is, yeah, the bees will work the trees, but then they run out of flowers. They may have maybe going all the way across that field over there to find more flowers. If you have these here, you're adding more variety to their diet and you're also keeping them close to home where you know you're not going to spray them or they're not going to run into a lot of trouble. And you don't have to plant every row 12 foot wide and so on and so forth. Some's better than nothing. Uh, typical management on this would be more like planting every other row and leaving one row bare to throw brush in or just didn't want to spend the money on seed or whatever. It's small seed, so this was planted at about eight pounds per acre. We planted all these things and, and, and the field treatment was all done with a John Deere grain drill. So we just closed it down real tight and watched what we were doing and basically planted mustard with a, with a grain drill. It can be done. And we planted this early November. We got, a, we planted, we'd had gotten a little bit of moisture prior to that. And then we got some more moisture not too long after that to help basically get it all well established. And then this year we had monsoonal floods and the locals are telling me that the water was running across here about a foot and a half deep occasionally, if not deeper. So low spots is kind of where, yeah, we lost the cover crop, but we got cover crop on 90% of this ground that we planted versus all we would have is poa bluegrass and, and little stuff with little shallow roots that isn't doing us a whole lot of good. So that's what we, the brassica mix, it's not for everyone, but it, but it does a good job for what it's intended for. So we'll go over here and take a look at our, our winter triticale. The way we laid this out was we went up, turned around, came back the next row over when we were planting. So we had block. So we had a two row block. We did it twice um, for basically measurement and things that were going on for that purpose. So this is the winter triticale planted about, I want to say below 60 pounds per acre which is kind of what you want to do with that because then it sprawls out sideways for a long time. It doesn't necessarily go vertical real fast due to competition. Um, it's just in boot stage right now versus the other that's just headed out and starting to pollinate. So typically this could probably be mowed. If there's enough soil moisture, it may grow back again. Again, we're going to pump some more roots out, that type of thing, but it comes in handy sometimes. It's a, and for somebody that's starting, it's relatively cheap, it's relatively easy to install and establish and work with. Um, it's not particularly picky. So biggest problem it might have is being flooded out. That's gonna happen every 10 years, not every year probably, unless you're in a place where you probably shouldn't have planted trees in the first place. Um, so overall, it does a really good job for that type of stuff. It doesn't fix any nitrogen. So if you're trying to get some add some nitrogen to your system, it's not gonna do that. It and the mustard are both going to be good nitrogen scavengers. So if you were in tomatoes such as what's behind us and there was a lot of residual nitrogen left out there, you may look, may be looking at, we want to capture that and not let it leach out. Probably not an issue in this part of the world, but in other parts of the world, it is something that there is on everyone's radar that they want to have something that's going to scavenge that nitrogen and keep it from leaching. It's up in the tops. So when you shred it up and you turn it in, it's going to release back out again. You're not adding any, but you're not losing very much. Um, efficiencies in scavenging are pretty high, and it's gonna get higher the deeper the root system is, basically. So when they're small, they're not gonna be doing a real good job. I don't know this year whether the way the rain fell and everything else, how good a scavenging job it might've done, but I'm sure it was doing some. We can see by the color that, and we saw earlier this year, the edges were pretty tall and pretty green, and the middles were kind of depressed and a little bit on the yellow side. So that kind of shows that they're probably fertigating and it was scavenging some of that nitrogen that was left over that trees hadn't used. 
and putting it in the tops basically. Right now it's kind of evened out a little bit. It's still a little, it could be a little darker green, but on the other hand, it's not like it's our part of a, it's part of a fertilizer thing in the backside that we're trying to keep the fertilizer in the top growth. We're in top soil, we're not trying to let it get out. So anyways, shorter, could mow, could mow and have it come back again. You could drive on it all winter long for probably, or pretty close to it if you had wanted to. Deep roots, short tops. Um, like I said, easy enough to install. Planted about 50, 60, 75 pounds to the acre per planted acre. So cover crop math means that if we planted every other middle and we planted a 10 foot, 10 foot out of 22 foot, we're planting a quarter of the total acres. We're not planting the whole, you got a 40 acre block, we're only planting about 10. So our last example that we're gonna talk about is the most diverse of the, of the blends. There's seven items in this mix. And again, it was, diversity is kind of high on everyone's radar and their cover cropping ideas. It's kind of, this year it's kind of showing that, yeah, it probably, probably, has, probably is a good thing to have more than one thing out there. Um, our question on diversity is how much is too much? If, if um, what's, what's everything bringing to the table? We're in this, we're in, in this case, we can find everything and everything's behaving kind of like it's supposed to. So we've got a triticale we used to, I used to spring in here. And then this grayer looking one here is the rye. And he's starting to head out. He's just coming out. So he's a little bit behind. He's gonna have deep roots. This is gonna have deep fibrous roots. White flowers, we have radish in there, so we have that big tap root underneath of it. We have the mustard, which is also a tap root. Bee forage, um, beneficial insect forage. The whole thing's offering harborage for beneficial insects, which is just as important, if not more, than having something for them to eat. We have common vetch growing well in here this year. Um, Common vetch is belying me this year because it is climb, kind of climbing, but it's usually a little more shrubby. It's not going to be the one that runs out and climbs up the trees. Um, most, of the time, most of the time you're going to be controlling it earlier than that anyways. Let's see if I can find a fava bean in here. There he is. There he is. And he's even got some knots on the root. Good. And then we have fava beans, kind of a traditional California um, cool season cover crop material. It's actually a true vetch. It just doesn't look like the other vetch, but the flowers are very similar. These things usually get a lot of aphids, which actually helps with the ladybugs. They have something to eat. Um, there's no real evidence that the aphids come out of the, out of the cover crop into the trees, but on the other hand, maybe they do, maybe they don't. It's just flowering. It also has a tap rooting type of system. And the knots I'm talking about are basically little uh, storage glands. Legumes work with rhizobium bacteria in the soil to fix nitrogen. So they suck it out of the atmosphere, keep it in their plant tissue, and they also store, it, store excess in these little knots basically on the root. So though, as those break down, they're releasing nitrogen after you've terminated the plant. <coughs> Hollow stem breaks up goes away pretty fast. Why we would put it in mixes like this that have peas and climbing vetch in it is it's pretty sturdy. It's got something for them to climb on. Keeps them up off the ground. Peas are notorious for laying on wet ground and rotting off. They'll run out and they'll look like you're doing great and then they had a wet spot and they're died. But it's a diverse mix. This one was planted at about 60 to 70 pounds per acre as well. Um, again, planted with a John Deere grain drill. The mustard and the radish are right down around 1%, per, 1%, 1 to 2% by, volume, by weight in the mix. If we put more in there, well, we would have is mustard because they outcompete everything else early. But they're in here basically to serve several purposes, that tip, taproot system, scavenge nitrogen, and bee forage, pollinator health, that type of thing. When you talk to the NRCS or the USDA, what their number one reason for a cover crop is erosion protection. We grow most stuff on flat ground and it's not, we don't have a lot of rain, we don't have a lot of wind, so erosion is not real high on our 
on our radar a lot of times, although it does occur. But on the other hand, if you've got something out here, it's protecting the soil surface from raindrop impact as well. And then when we looked at it earlier this year, as deep as it was probably running through here, it still didn't cave out the road down there. It didn't wash out things as bad. So you could see where it hit, it actually slowed down the flow of water across the field. And I had, I've had several other people comment this year as well. as You know, the, the orchards that had cover crop in it, they had water in it, but the water was gone in a couple days. Going on next to it, it's still standing three inches deep in water. So it does make a difference. So it's a, it's a soil building, soil health, soil, a soil proper thing to put in the, in, the, in the rotation, basically, when you're thinking about it. And you have to remember that, okay, we're growing, in this case, we're growing walnuts. But the ground, walnuts are grounded in the ground. So if we can keep our soils healthy, keep them water flowing in them, gases flowing through them, biology that's in there alive and well, our trees are gonna flourish. Otherwise, we're just doing hydroponics.